So the one, one group is getting the medicine and the other group is getting a placebo. And now nobody in either group knows whether they're getting the medicine or they're getting a placebo. Right? That's the whole idea. But doesn't that mean that the treatment group now is going to be more stressed out? Because they don't know if they're getting a medicine or the placebo. Yeah? And isn't the control group uh, also going to be stressed out because they don't know if they're getting a medicine or a placebo. Yeah? My, my goal is not to make them not stressed out. My goal is to make them equally stressed out. Right? What I need is I need both of the groups to be equally stressed out. And that's going to what's control the placebo effect. Okay? Now obviously for placebo to work they can't know if the medicine is, if they're getting a medicine or the real thing. So um, oftentimes we do something called a double blind experiment. So a double blind, so a double blind. So a double blind means that the, the, obviously the people in the experiment don't know if they're getting medicine or placebo. But also, the people walking in the room with the medicine actually don't know. So, it, yes, somebody knows. Somebody knows right, right above them. Somebody's keeping very careful track of who's getting a placebo and who's not. But the person that's walking in the room with the pill doesn't know if it's a placebo or the real thing. And that's why the person that's getting the pill doesn't really, can't like work off their body language and sort of figure out whether it's a placebo or not. So double blind refers to the person getting the medicine doesn't know if it's a placebo and the person directly giving them the medicine doesn't know if it's a placebo. Does that make sense? That's called, that's referred to as a double blind. And that's very common in experiments. And expects fixed experiments with medicines. So double blind so a very standard medicine operating procedure in an experiment is to do a double blind with a placebo. You'll hear, you'll hear people say that in experiments that involve medicines. All right, so, but how do I control, uh, how do I get these two groups, right? That's, that's one of the key things. Like, how do I get two groups of people that are actually alike? That's a really good, good topic, and that's the heart of an experiment, right? Getting these two groups of people that are alike in all of these confounding variables. One of the main methods that's used in, sci in scientific experiments is this what we call random assignment. Now this is different than a random sample. Remember a random sample is taking um, a sample of people from the, and where, from the population where everybody in the population has a chance of being chosen. That's not what this is. Experiments are usually just a group of volunteers. Okay, so I have a group of people, right? that probably are not necessarily representative of the population, but my goal is not to apply this data to the population. My goal is to prove that one variable causes another. It's a different, experiments have a very different um, direction, right? I'm trying to prove that one thing causes another. So we, what we do is we randomly split up the group of volunteers into two or more groups. So that we call, we refer that to as random assignment. So random assignment is a key factor in most experiments. So here's the idea. I have my group of volunteers that are going to test out this new medicine, right? So this group over here is going to get, I'm going to randomly put them into two groups. Now what does that mean? That means everybody has an equal chance of being chosen in one group or the other, right? That's what random refers to. So we're randomly separating into two groups. One group is going to be designated as the treatment group. They're going to get the medicine. The other group is going to be designated as the control group, and they're going to get a placebo. Okay? Now, scientists really believe in this, by the way. They've worked this, on this for years, um, and it, the random assignment really does work. It does tend to create two equal groups of people. The groups will have similar ages, they'll have similar numbers of people with bad diets and good diets, they'll have similar numbers of people who exercise a lot and similar numbers of people that don't exercise. They'll have similar people that feel like they're very stressed out and similar people that don't feel stressed out. Um, even the genetics uh, can be, start to become more alike. Okay. 
Now, if, if you, so random assignment sort of gets us started. But let's suppose that I take a, a hard look at these two groups, and I feel like, oh, well, maybe this group has a few more older people. So maybe I want to add some older people to the other group to balance it out. Or maybe I, uh, this, this one group has more people that exercise. So maybe I want to add some more exercise people to the other group. Sometimes we refer to those as direct control. We can sort of play with the groups to make them more alike if I need to. Um, you'll also hear in, an, you know, remember that this is just a, sort of an introduction to the ideas of an experiment. Um, you can actually take classes in grad school on just on experimental design and setting up good experiments. But, um, but you'll hear re things like blocking, that's more of an advanced technique. Um, one other way that you could get two groups of people that are very much alike would be to use the same people measured twice. Now you can't really do that in a, in a medicine experiment um, because we have to have people that are on the medicine and not on the medicine. We can't, we can't really have uh, use the same people measured twice, but if that was possible, sometimes you could do get away with an experiment where you're looking at the same people measured twice. If that was the case, I might have, you know, the groups would be perfectly alike because it would be the same people measured twice. Okay, but the goal of member of experiment is the two groups of people that are alike. Now, how are the groups different? The groups are different in the explanatory variable only, the explanatory variable. So the only difference between your groups should be just the explanatory variable, just the thing that you're trying to show the cause. All right? So the only difference between my treatment and control groups is that one's getting the medicine and one is not. Everything else ages, diets, exercise, stress, genetics, very similar between the two groups. Okay? Now, hopefully, once we do this, now what we're looking for is, was there a significant difference between the groups, right? That's what I'm looking for. So if my treatment group, the ones that got the medicine, let's suppose they were significantly lower blood pressure, right? Significantly lower blood pressure, then the control group, well then now I have proven that it's the medicine that's causing their blood pressure to be lower and not any of these other things because these groups have the same ages, right? So age is not no longer a factor. These two groups had very similar exercise patterns, so exercise now is not a factor. I'm sort of proving that each of these is not involved. In more advanced kinds of experiments, you can actually go through each individual confounding variable and do a separate um, calculation to try to figure out if this is involved or not, or prove it's not involved. But the, the, the two-group method is sort of the standard um, way of looking at it. Okay? So if this, if my treatment group, the ones getting medicine, if it was significantly lower, then I sort of have proven that it's the medicine that's causing their blood pressure to be lower. Now, if this was not significantly different, right, if these were about the same, then I'm not, this is not good for, for the pharmaceutical company because that's kind of proving that the medicine doesn't work, right? So um, that, that can be a case as well. All right? So, so again, so this was uh, at least an example, kind of walking you through some of the ideas, uh, just the basic idea of an experiment and how it works. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you another example in our next video. So this was part one, and we'll do another example um, in our next video. All right, this is Matt Show and Intro Stats. I'll see you next time.